What's happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan, and I hope you are all doing well. Today we are talking about Chelsea midfielder Ross Barkley and another one of my The Importance of videos. But before we do get into today's video, I'd like to ask you to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notifications icon so you can keep up with all this mainly Chelsea related content. Okay then, so who is Ross Barkley? Barkley is a 25 year old sort of central attacking midfielder who plays in either the number eight position or the number 10 position. Barkley emerged into Premier League football through Everton Football Club in Merseyside. As he was coming up through the ranks and being recognized by English football, he was actually kind of being recognized as an English wonder kid, you know, really great on the ball, incredibly gifted technically, and he was linking up with Romelu Lukaku incredibly well at the time, and suddenly everyone was having a look at this young English lad. However, this wave did not last forever, and Ross did endure a few injuries, and over a couple of years, the buzz died down a little bit. Ross Barkley began to see his future away from Everton Football Club. Now, I'm not sure all the reasons for that, but I think probably he wanted to restart his footballing career after a bit of a dip. And also, I think he's always maintained great ambition. And apparently Chelsea had long been looking at Ross Barkley for a few years. Um, actually so far back that they thought he could be a successor to Frank Lampard, I read somewhere. Not sure how true that is, but considering how long ago Ross was recognised as such a great midfield talent to play in that eight role, you could think, you know, maybe, maybe they did. Maybe they were. <laughs> anyway. Barkley did not sign a contract extension with Everton and he basically wanted to move. There was contact with Chelsea Football Club and it was understood that a transfer would be made. However, in rather eyebrow raising circumstances, he didn't move the summer he was meant to and actually moved the following window in January for a mere 15 million pounds. A quick reflection on how good that transfer is or how much of a bargain it is in terms of a transfer fee. I know we didn't have much left in this contract, but 15 million pounds pounds for a player that was widely regarded as one of England's best young talents who now starts for Chelsea Football Club in you know, a lot of competitions who is a full England international that Gareth Southgate really rates you know and to be that young to get for 15 million pounds was great business for Chelsea but Barkley had to work incredibly hard to integrate himself when he arrived at Chelsea there was no messing he got into the best physical shape he'd ever been in his career um, and his application to sort of his craft, I guess, skyrocketed when he learned that Maurizio Sarri was going to arrive at Chelsea and become the Chelsea manager. Barkley immediately started studying uh, Sarri's Napoli side and Empoli and how they played and wanted to start converting himself to be a player in the mould of Sarri. As you can appreciate, Maurizio Sarri really appreciated this and put him into his team immediately and he was he featured a lot for Sarri. I know he, <laughs> there's that joke about how he often switched with Kovacic and he did which was infuriating for a lot of Chelsea fans. Barkley's application and work rate was really highly rated by Maurizio Sarri. Let's rewind a little bit. So when Barkley arrived at Chelsea, he was elated to be in London and at a club like Chelsea who's been so successful in recent years. When being interviewed by Chelsea's media team, he was asked who he idolised growing up. Now, I know this is such a sort of media positive answer, but he said he idolised Frank Lampard as a number eight himself, um, which makes sense. Frank Lampard was English a number eight and arguably the best attacking eight midfielder in English football history. Bearing in mind, Ross Barkley is from Everton. He's hardly gonna say Steven Gerrard. So you can imagine if that's how he felt about Frank Lampard, he would be elated right now that Frank Lampard is managing Chelsea and having a really close look at Barkley. So it's kind of probably in a way a dream come true for him. And obviously being in London. Barkley completely immersed himself into playing in London, being at a London club. He um, got all his uh, Everton tattoos laser removed and he wanted to have a clean slate, I guess like physiologically or sort of physically as well as sort of emotionally and mentally. So he got his tattoos removed, he wanted to breathe in the London football culture and after games at Stamford Bridge, he'd take a shower and he'd walk home from the stadium, just through the streets, which is incredibly rare for a footballer and obviously people would come up to him and get photos and ask for signatures. 
And he was so happy to be integrated in this new footballing culture and life. He'd just smile, take the photos, do the signatures, and he sort of felt like he'd arrived. Right, so far the narrative all sounds lovely and warm, right? He arrives at Chelsea, he gets in the best physical shape he's ever been, he really applies himself, gets his head down, you know, walks home from Stamford Bridge, really gets himself, immerses himself in London culture. Lovely story, but how has he performed for Chelsea? Is he done well? People are still raising eyebrows over Ross Barkley. I mean, a lot of people make the comparison to Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Now, if you know me and my channel, I'm a huge Ruben Loftus-Cheek fanboy. And probably for me, that left starting spot, well, if you, you might be able to accommodate both of these players, certainly Frank in his different pragmatic systems, you might have to have both. If I have to choose from one of them to play an A spot, I'm going to choose Ruben Loftus-Cheek, probably. But Barkley has a lot to offer and why, you know, I think perhaps they could even play together at one point. But anyway, I'm going to stop rambling on for a moment about my player preferences and Ross Barkley's story at Chelsea because I do want to look at some statistics, so on that, let's take a look at the numbers. So in the Premier League last season, Ross Barkley scored three goals from midfield and registered five assists in just 13 starts, which on the surface value is pretty good. Yes, three goals doesn't sound great, but in terms of the minutes of how many he played because he was constantly being subbed in and out, three goals and five assists is actually very good. And if you look at the kind of goals they were, or well, certainly one of those goals was that last minute equaliser against Manchester United, um, which, you know, was a big goal and you could tell how elated he was to be scoring that goal, showing how happy he was to be playing for Chelsea and scoring an important goal. So like I said, due to his rotation with Mateo Kovacic, Ross did have limited minutes, but his eight goal involvements last season actually worked out to a contribution every 155 minutes. Now, 155 minutes is actually a really handsome return for a midfielder. You know, you get a lot of decent strikers that have something similar to that. And for a little bit more context, I just want to reference Manchester City's David Silva, who is an incredibly good footballer, widely regarded by City fans as their best midfielder and by some their best player. Now, David Silva played a lot of game time last season and around amazing players in the Champions starting 11. David Silva managed a goal involvement every 172 minutes. So, 172 minutes from David Silva, 155 from Ross Barkley. This by no means is saying Ross Barkley is a better player than David Silva, it's just a point of reference to a good offensive return and maybe what was a difficult side to be in at the time at Chelsea. Right, let's have a look at a couple more statistics. Pass accuracy, last season Ross Barkley managed to achieve an average of 91.2% pass accuracy. Frankly, a gargantuan pass accuracy average. For someone who plays in a team where there's a lot of passes and a lot of possession, um, granted, a lot of that possession was in a, I don't want to say a safe position because Sari's football is a lot of passes across the, the back, but it's actually done in such a way where you're meant to put your side in danger to bait out the opposition. It's not like, for example, Louis van Hulls uh, football or certainly like his Manchester United if you can remember that that was literally safety in possession Maurizio Sarri's football is bait in possession which actually comes with an element of danger anyway I've digressed because I'm a football nerd what I'm saying is that's a really, really good pass accuracy from Ross Barkley there. And they weren't all two yard passes. Ross Barkley was putting out 1.5 long balls per game accurately. So he's quite capable of switching play as well as carrying the ball and doing short passes and dribbling for ball progression in the center of the pitch. He could switch play with accurate long balls as well. And even though he saw so much of the ball, Ross Barkley was very good at controlling the ball. In fact, he had 0.7 bad controls per game, which is hardly anything. You make the comparison to another offensive style central midfielder like Paul Pogba, he actually had 2.1 bad controls per game. So Ross Barkley in a possession side only doing 0.7, very good from the young Englishman. Right, that's enough of the numbers for the moment. So what can I say about Ross Barkley? Well, firstly, he's an incredibly neat and tidy player. Passes the ball very well, can release it quickly. Very, very strong, he's built up his physicality and obviously he's got so much experience in the Premier League, but at just the age of 25, 
He's very capable of dealing with the physicality. He can hold the ball up well, he can release the ball quickly and execute tidy passes. He also has an eye for goal and has no problem taking responsibility himself when that's popping off a long shot and trying to score to force the issue, then he will do that. But that does not mean he's a selfish player, hence the assists. If you've watched Barkley under Maurizio Sarri and even a little bit in pre-season and for England under Gareth Southgate, he will always try and do the right move in terms of releasing the ball to uh, another player, a teammate, to offer the best opportunity of a successful offensive action. So where does that leave me on Barkley? Um, I think he's a good player. I mean, like I said, I'm a Loftus-Cheek fanboy, but I feel like the ceiling has not been reached on Barkley. He, everyone, everyone saw him as this like wonder kid, and that kid hasn't gone away, and he's just come back to Chelsea with really good attitude, application, physicality, and he's had good coaching. He dreamt of being like Lampard, now he's playing under Lampard. So what do you think? Do you think he should be given more of a chance? Does he deserve it? Do you think he will be given more of a chance under Frank Lampard? Do you think Lampard fancies him? Fancies him as a player in his team? Don't make it weird. Let me know your opinions in the comments below, guys, because I'm gonna wrap it up today. Really keen on reading your comments. Get down in the comment section. I've I'm sure you've noticed I'm often replying to all you guys. I love engaging with the subscribers. And if you are new, do subscribe to the channel and please like this video. Like the video. Why not? And tell your friends to subscribe. Uh, what else can I tell you? And you know what? If you want to support my channel, please become a patron. Check out my Patreon. The link's in the description. It's $1 a month and it really helps me out. And you can actually access exclusive content videos that I do for just the patrons so that's cool right I upload all the time on here so I'm not money hungry the channel's not monetized I've only got a small handful of patrons but one of those people can be you and we can have a cool exchange about football on there and you check out the exclusive content that's it enjoy the football guys I'll see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living I'ma walk the walk outline my lines I rap through thought body bag the verse outline the chuck in my life seen trouble, hustle on the double, silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle, yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble, I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby.